By his own account, Cameron Clarkson's senior year at Creighton Durham Hall should have been the best of his life. Let's go, baby. He was captain of the football team. And with players like Chantrell Henderson, the Raiders won their second state title in 10 years. This will be a touchdown. But this All-American teenager was carrying a devastating secret, one that would eventually derail his dreams of playing college football. I was really depressed. I didn't know how to... I didn't know... I didn't know I was, really. I didn't know why I felt so bad all the time. And test his faith both in the institution that was his home for four years. There's no need to put someone through what I went through. And in himself. It changed my life and it changed who I am. Clarkson went to the Catholic high school because it was supposed to be a safe and spiritual place to learn. But it put him on a collision course with another Cretan grad who abused her position as a substitute teacher and weight room supervisor to have sex with the then 16-year-old boy. Leg trip, but Henning didn't want to come. Gail Gagne is the granddaughter of legendary Minnesota wrestler Vern Gagne and the daughter of his equally famous tag team partner and son, Greg. But to the boys at Creighton, she was someone else. She was, you know, just kind of like the, the young, hot teacher. Would you please state your full name for the record? Gail Ellen Gagne. In never-before-seen depositions, Gagne describes how the two began bonding over their sometimes absent fathers. They would talk as she gave Cameron rides home from the weight room where he worked the summer before his junior year. I just said that my dad was also a, a former athlete and that I, I understand that sometimes they're not always in your life and that's part of their job and and it's you know maybe not the best situation but that you can overcome. And your act of kindness and giving a ride home um, that made you drawn to him at that time? Made you what? I'm sorry. Made you feel drawn to him? Drawn. I would say I felt bad for him. Um, the fact that he was left at school with no ride and I felt bad for him. I wouldn't say I was drawn to him. At 25, Ganya was only nine years older than Cameron. And as the summer went on, he says the two grew closer, going to lunch, becoming friends on Facebook. And Ganya opened up about her fiance in Florida. She said, you know, there's one problem. And I was like, you know, what's the problem? And she was like, you. And I was just like, wow, like, there's, you know, she really, you know, she really likes me. She really... Um, I was just like, I was blown away. I was just, you know, I was excited. I was, um, I felt, I felt special. Eventually, Cameron says things turned sexual with the two hooking up at her parents' home in Bloomington and a motel near the Mall of America. But within a couple of months, keeping quiet about the relationship began to take its toll. It got to the point where I didn't like sneaking around. I didn't like feeling like I was, hiding something or doing something wrong anymore so I just you know as much as as attractive as she was as much as I liked you know food you know my <clears throat> I was a high school athlete um, as much as I liked you know getting a ride home or just feeling feeling cool feeling like the guy like I just didn't feel right after it was over, Cameron told a few classmates about what happened even showing off a couple of suggestive pictures Ganya had sent him as proof. But it wasn't until after they called it quits that Ganya went through training for teachers at the school on how to maintain proper boundaries with students. Did you uh, learn in the Virtus training that um, it was against the law and the criminal law for a teacher to engage uh, uh, a student under his or her control in any sexual contact? I believe that was covered, yes. Before that time, did you know that to be against the law? No. Soon rumors about a teacher sleeping with a student spread through the halls, and a girl Cameron was interested in dating finally went to police. It was hard because in one, I was, it was it's just a uh, bombardment of mixed messages every single day. Guys walking up to me, like trying to dap me up, like, yeah, hey, like, hey, like, it's the teacher, like, what's up? Um, and, you know, girls who clearly had went home and had conversations with their families who, you know, said, you know, you stay far away from that young man, you know, he's a, he's a troublemaker and um, he's a sex addict and, you know, all these other different things. People looked at me like a pervert and like, you know, 
someone who someone who just really messed up. We're learning tonight a Metro school worker is under investigation for inappropriate contact with the student. By the time news of their relationship made headlines that spring, Ganya had been removed from the school. I was crying because of having to be to leave. Um, it was the spring. I had a lacrosse game that night and I couldn't even tell my team. But Cameron would soon find out just how far his fellow students would go to show their disapproval. When his mother's car was covered in foam and peanut butter, which Cameron is deathly allergic to, and Ganya's name was bleached into their front lawn. I figured, you know what, maybe when they say things like, all are welcome, that they really mean it. And maybe um, when they say that they believe in a God who forgives and you know, that this is a space for, you know, kids to come and, you know, figure out who they are, that they mean those things. But I would learn over the course of my senior year time and time again that that just wasn't the case for me. After that, Cameron threw himself into the theater department and marijuana to numb the pain until he graduated and left for Howard University in Washington, D.C. I had to get away from Minnesota. I had to get away from um, this life, this, this Cameron. But he couldn't run away from his past. Even though Ganya eventually pled guilty to fifth degree criminal sexual conduct and must register as a sex offender, Cameron is now suing both her and the school for not doing enough to protect him. They're betting on the fact that a jury won't be able to empathize with me because I don't look like a victim of sexual abuse. I look like a sexual abuser in you know, terms of society, what, what, what society um, says a criminal or what uh, an aggressor looks like. I don't look like someone who could have feelings or could be attacked or who could go through anything. And the fact that they're banking on that, that they think that there's not a jury of my peers who would empathize with me rather than this poor lady who's had her career ruined. Um, it's very sobering. Um, there's a lot of double standards. But that won't keep Cameron from doing what he has to to keep the same thing from happening to anyone else. My story is the story of a survivor, not the story of a victim. Part of that is me reminding myself that because that's the only way that actually comes to fruition. But um, that is how I cope now. As, a pal as opposed to how I used to cope.